Hello there and welcome, welcome to this Med School Tutors and Crab Fighter webinar. This on our menu tonight, tips for success over the holiday break. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. My name is Dave. First, I'll let uh, uh, Callie introduce herself. Dr. Morris, tell me things. Hey, everyone. I'm Callie. Um, I am a, a second year resident in pediatrics um, in Cincinnati. Um, I've been with um, MST now for about let's see, like seven, eight months. Um, and I do um, a lot of step three tutoring, but I also tutor for step one and step two. Um, and I really enjoy it. So I'm happy to be here tonight talking with you guys. Awesome. We're, we're happy to have you here. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Dave. I'm a uh, emergency medicine resident hanging out in rural Pennsylvania. Um, been hanging with the company for, oh God, almost almost half a decade at this point, I guess, uh, and been tutoring for 10 plus years. Um, so you know, it's, it's a lot of fun from the MCAT through step three, just uh, getting to hang out with you guys and gals and uh, pass down some knowledge about our topic tonight, the holiday break. So before we get there, a little bit about who we are. Uh, and there is a pupper sighting at about five o'clock on this slide. That's Maisie. Um, she's the official mascot. Uh, med school tutors, we've been here for 15 plus years doing this pre-med residency boards. If it has something to do with general medical education, I'm sure we would do it. Most of us, again, that's the same pipeline. We started as tutors and teachers as med students, now we're residents, now we're about to be attending in six months. No, you know, who's counting? Um, and, you know, we partner with our sister uh, company, Cram Fighter, um, and they're great. Um, what's it called? If you're like me and you speak about 50 words per minute because you have uh, the attention span of a goldfish, uh, Cram Fighter is clutch because it helps take the spaghetti noodles that are my brain thoughts and turns them into something organized. And organization is key when you're trying to succeed in any sort of medical endeavor. So our agenda tonight, we're gonna to do pointers for sort of the holiday, Christmas break for wherever you may be in your study. If you're preclinical, if you're a clinical student, if you're a resident, and then how do you find sort of like a balance between, you know, between the eggnog and you world? So do you do it them at the same time, perhaps? Um, bold choice. Um, and then we're gonna have a live question and answer. So, so Callie, let's start us off. Yeah. Clinical students, what yeah. shall they be doing at this time? Yeah, so I remember back when I was a preclinical student, which was not that long ago, um, I remembered I was so excited for like my first big break of mm -hmm. um, medical school to have some time to like breathe and relax and like get my life together. Um, but I also remember feeling the anxiety of trying to figure out what I should be doing during that time. Um, so these are our kind of recommendations and tips of how to best utilize your little time that you have off to not only enjoy yourself, but, um, you know, do a little bit of review and kind of um, prepare for what's ahead in the near future for you. So big picture is, you know, your holiday break, um, you know, for your either your M1 year or your M2 year, you're probably um, going to be learning lots of content in your normal studies, but you're also probably looking ahead to step one, which is looming in the near future. And so I usually recommend people just kind of, um, you know, getting a feel for your, where you're at in terms of how you like to study, um, how quickly you can study. You know, there's some people that can like read a chapter of first aid and have it like memorized in a day. I was not that person. Um, so I think, you know, kind of getting a feel for what your study style is um, is great and really thinking about that during this time um, will be helpful when you prepare um, for studying for step. Um, and so you can start even as early as you know the the winter break of you know of M1 year or if you're in your second year and you're planning on taking steps sometime um, in the spring um, before starting your third year, um, you should definitely be thinking about um, making a step exam timeline, kind of deciding when you're planning on taking the exam and kind of big picture what resources you want to use and how you plan on utilizing them prior to your exam. 
Um, so obviously there's tons of resources out there. Um, I think the big ones that we all kind of have heard of and use um, pretty frequently um, for step one um, are UWorld. And I cannot say enough things about the importance of just like cranking out UWorld questions early on. Um, I definitely know that there's a lot of people um, out there who will start doing um, UWorld questions as early as their first year of medical school. Um, and if you're gonna do that, I think that's totally fine. I think a great way to do it is kind of correlate whatever you're learning in your normal school curriculum with what UWorld questions you're doing and try to you know match those things up as best as you can um, so that you're not just kind of quote unquote wasting UWorld questions on topics that you haven't really studied yet. Um, because then when you go back to do those questions again, when you're truly studying for step, you might remember the answer, but you might not really have like truly learned the content. So I think it's helpful to try to match up what you're doing on UWorld um, with what you're learning in your normal studies. Um, the other big thing is first aid. And like I said, um, I was somebody who had to go through first aid very, very slowly um, because I just like trying to absorb all the mnemonics and the charts and the graphs. Um, sometimes it was really difficult for me. Um, so winter break is a great time to just kind of get used to even looking at first aid and deciding within that how you like to study it um and you know you can pick some of those topics that you might have gone over thus far in your um in your preclinical years um for example like biochem is something that i know a lot of people struggle with and feel like they need lots of repetition with and so that's a great topic to kind of just flip through the biochem chapter and do some studying over the holiday break if you have time and then last but not least, in terms of um, different resources, and we'll talk about some more resources here in a minute, um, but a lot of people love Anki flashcards. And that's something great you can do like on the go while you're sipping your eggnog or like driving to grandma's house with your parents. You know, if you're in the backseat of the car, you know, you can do those things, you know, on your computer. A lot of people will get different flashcard apps too, like on their phone. Um, so that's something great that you can do kind of on the go. And it's not something that takes a lot of time to really sit down and dedicated study. Um, we can talk to you more about um, like specific um, Anki decks because there's a lot of them you can find online that are great for step one. Um, but that's something else I recommend doing um, kind of over Christmas break if you have time. Dave, do you have any other thoughts on any of those? No, that's that's really good. And I really like the, the sort of point about getting your resources in. Um, and I sort of like, I usually talk about like especially so m1 you have you have like a the ability to sort of review a couple things you're still a little bit low stress step is kind of not hanging over your head um but what i usually like to tell students who are going through like the m2 holiday season is like you should start thinking about what your dedicated um step prep is going to look like and you should use this time to do what i like to call a dry run uh, my school, what they did, which was very clever, I, I tend to pass this forward, is they had you take your first NBME exam when you came back from holiday break, um, giving you the opportunity to sort of study a little bit during some of the holiday season. And, uh, you know, you're still six months out, so that first NBME exam doesn't really mean a whole lot. So what, uh, what I usually tell students is like, write yourself a mini step prep plan. You're not doing six days a week, eight hours a day. You might be doing three or four hours a day for five days a week during those two weeks off. And that still gives you plenty of time to do things with family and friends and whatever other activities you may wanna do over the holiday or Christmas season. Um, but it teaches you a little bit about what resources work for you, what resources don't work for you, and you will find that your preconceived notions may be a little bit different. So for example, you may try and use Anki the way you have during the year and find that it doesn't work the same way as it does during Dedicate. Now, I'm a big fan of Anki. I was actually, as you were talking about that, I was thinking to myself, uh, I, today I hit my 90,000th minute on Anki. <laughs> having have done it from uh, before med school all the way to third year of residency. So it still is the king of, uh, of sort of memorization of rote facts. Um, but, and, and I think the only place and you know, not that, uh, you know, it's important to, to know that like, we have all these different ideas and strategies and there is no one right way. Mm -hmm. So the only place I sort of, I think, I think a little bit differently is I usually tell people save you will until it's actually dedicated time itself. 
because it's such a valuable, you know, they're, they are, as, as I agree, the king of kings when it comes to test prep. So usually, usually the only difference is I'll tell students, like, if you're going to do pre-dedicated, now's your time to use Kaplan mm-hmm. or Rx or even Ambos if you're feeling super spicy. Um, you know, you want, you love practice questions because there's a direct correlate in studies between the amount of individual practice questions you do and your overall score. I usually tell people to unwrap you world when it's dedicated time, which some students will start their dedicated in January. And then mm-hmm. if you're lucky enough to go to a school that has like, like I did, that has pretty much no attendance requirements, you just stay at home and study your world all day for the most part. So, uh, but otherwise, I think that's great. You know, you know, use, you know, use these things as a dry run to find out what works for you and what doesn't work for you because you'll figure out your inefficiencies during a lower stress period before you start your actual dedicated. So, so speaking of resources, and you're t- just talking about you world and first aid, Kaplan, and I see the Amboss triangle hanging out there, <laughs> um, and Anki. So, like, yeah, just just sort of building all off that. Um, you know, what I tend to do is um, for students, is I usually give them like uh, it's almost like a rotating cycle. It's, you know. For, for, for X amount of days, depending how long you're thinking, you're going to like skim first aid, do you world, review, write your notes, rinse and repeat for every system all the way through. Um, but I mean, you have a lot of these good secondary resources. The thing that you can do during your uh, winter sort of study plan that you can't do in dedicated is you can say, okay, I feel bad about two or three topics and I'm not going to be able to learn everything because this isn't a true dedicated, but like, for example, my weakness is always gyne pathology to this day. No idea. Clear cell. uh, No, no clue. So, so like during, during my uh, winter, I reviewed something I was bad at and used my style to again, sharpen it. You mentioned biochem, which is a great, topic you know review review of sort of your basic physiology your genetics your biochem it's a great time to do stuff like that um Callie when you were sort of getting ready for your holiday review did you tend to follow like these resources or did you tend to use some other ones along the way yeah I was gonna say I primarily used um exactly what is here I actually am probably an anomaly in the sense that like I don't love Anki, which is really interesting because I love flashcards, but I always, um, Anki stressed me out because you can never like be done. You know, it always like keeps recycling and I liked having like a to-do list to cross off. So I actually didn't use Anki that much, um, but I did exactly what um, we talked about with using like Kaplan as my like primary Mm -hmm. QBank during like earlier in my um, kind of pre step one preparation, um, before actually, um, getting you world. Um, and I think that worked great. Um, Amboss was not around, um, back mm-hmm. when I was, um, studying for step one. Um, but I can say I used, um, Amboss when we'll talk about a little bit more, um, in my later years and I actually loved it. And so I would mm-hmm. highly recommend that as like a, um, kind of secondary Q bank that you can use along with, um, Kaplan. But yeah, I think all the resources here are great. Um, The other thing that I um, usually recommend to people, if you're like a video person, there's lots of resources out there with, you know, kind of like review video. There's the boards and beyond. Um, There's some on online med ed um, that are free, which is, that's great. Um, I think there's some DIT videos floating around and things like that, that you can get your hands on. Um, And so I think those are all um, really good resources too. If you're more of a kind of visual learner and like having like a video to accompany what you're reading or what questions you're doing. Yeah. And again, you know, there's your chance to find, if, if you haven't figured out if you're a visual kinesthetic or auditory learner, shout out to the webinar we do for that. Um, there is there's your opportunity to try different things uh, because studying for boards is different than studying for um what's it called class mm-hmm. and i you know so i agree with you i actually used anki a lot differently when i studied for boards than i did when i, as I studied for um sort of class and i mean again everyone's a little bit different 
I my heresy of choice was that I thought I thought first world uh, what's it called first aid was overrated, which I know. Yeah, it's, uh, slandering the uh, the yeah. Bible of first aid over here. Um, but yeah, you got to find out what sort of works for you, and you'll be able to tell because you'll find that you're putting a small or a, a decent amount of time in, and you're getting a lot out of it. So, and as you do, as you do sort of like your mock dry run, you'll find that like, I'm getting stuck here, here, and here. And like, perhaps this is a good idea to get, um, what's it called? To focus on this. And just a quick sort of thought here. So like, you know, we have all these resources. Again, you have a big collection of mush. So, and again, we're, we're hanging out with, with Cram Fighter tonight. It's always a good idea to remind of like, Cram fighter's ability to turn mush into highly organized stuff, talking about like getting checks and stuff like that. So like, it's a great thing too. And I usually tell my students, like if they're gonna do sort of a dry run of the holiday, try and use like a cram fighter in order to say, you know, what I wanna get done over this two weeks span and, you know, split it into your days because that'll tell you whether your plan is too aggressive or not aggressive enough or you're leaning too much on it. So like use a thing like Cram Fighter to, um, what's it called, to build on all these other resources and to stay organized so that you have these skills sharp for, um, for when you do your actual dedicated itself. Um, moving on to third year. Yeah, third year, look at that. You world, you world, you world. Uh, not exactly uh, reinventing the wheel here. Um, so this is nice, obviously get some, some chill time because uh if no one if you if you're a preclinical student no one's ever told you third year is the hardest year even though they make it sound like step one it's not um so like you know get some some sleep get caught up i was in surgery in the middle of the holiday break so no sleep for me um so and then yeah Internal medicine is a great sort of thing to review, especially if you haven't done it, if you're one of the poor souls who have internal med sort of last, is like understand the, the big heavy concept stuff. And some people use step up the med. I never liked step up medicine. Some people use master the boards. I was a big fan of master the boards. Most tend to fall on one side or the other. And then, yeah, it's largely, largely, and then, you know, what did, what did you do, Cal? Yeah, I was largely just a you world and then Amboss for dedicated. Yes, yeah, I was the, I was the same way. I did a lot of U World. Um, I agree. I thought that you know I kind of was the same way. Step up to medicine is great for like more detailed information. It's very heavy and dense, um, and so I kind of struggled using that. Um, but I used, um, the Amboss, um, like library. I used that a lot, yeah. um, to study. Um, and for those of you who don't know what it is, it's great. It's like, you can search different topics. You could put in, I don't know, pulmonary embolism, and it will literally tell you everything you could ever need to know about like the pathophysiology, the epidemiology, risk factors, how you treat it, how you manage it, how you work it up. Um, and so I use that a lot as kind of a supplementary um, thing to like, if I got a question wrong on you world, um, I would go to Amboss and look up whatever they had in the library about that topic. And I felt like that was a really, it was a more condensed version of step up to medicine. And it's great because it has an app. Um, and so you can do it again on the go on your phone, which I am all about like studying on the go so that you can continue to live your life and not burn out. And so um, anything that has an app that I could like study from the car, I loved that. So um, that's what I did a lot of third year. I, I like that a lot. And I, actually I want to, that's, that's a really good point. I've never thought to sort of talk about this. Um, I love apps for almost completely different reason because I find they're friendlier on my eyes because mm -hmm. um, it's a smaller screen. You don't, have to, you don't have to move back and forth. And you can turn most of your apps on either dark mode or you can turn your phone on sort of a pseudo dark mode and remove the blue light. So like, that's actually something that I do for a completely different reason. You know, when I'm tired of a headache or something out is I'll lay in the, I'll lay in my couch with like the UWorld app or these days it's the Rosh Review app um, yeah. or Alki. And it's the same material except now I can relax and lay down. I can turn the, the light down or in, make it sort of dark mode so that, you know, people forget about your eyes only have so much, a, not attention span, but only have so much ability to focus. So 
I really like that for a completely different reason. Um, and then otherwise, yeah, especially, you know, uh, you guys and gals, you're coming into an era where step two is going to be the big monster now. Um, if you thought if you thought anxiety was building around two data points over three years, why not one big data point over three years that defines your entire med school career, right? Right? Yeah, so terrifying. I get that. Uh, but like, so yeah, so a lot of lot of you guys and gals, if you're going to be doing third year, you're going to have to start thinking about like, where am I going to need to um, triage my time? And thankfully, it's somewhat simple because most third years do you world during the year as opposed to saving it. Um, so largely questions, questions, questions. Um, and then we can't forget about our supplementary resources, Pistanias. Oh, I remember Pistanias. Oh, Those are good it. times. Yeah, that's a great book. Um, first aid for CK, which I think is not nearly as good for first aid for step one. Um, AMBOSS is actually what my school recommended as the primary uh, question bank. That was, so they thought they were better. So uh, sketchy IM, that's a thing now. So back in my day, we just had sketchy uh, uh, micro. micro and that was it. <laughs> yep. Now you guys have your boards and beyonds and thankfully we had online meta. So I love online meta. Yeah. Um, so, and you have all these opportunities and again, you know, when you're writing your sort of uh, study plan, you know, you don't, you don't have to do it so much as a dry run because you've done a real dedicated four step one, but like, you know, think about where you're going to have to fill in gaps. Just what are you intrinsically not good at? Again, to this day, Gein gives me fits and memorizing that multiple uh, HSV pathway was, was awful. So, um, Tips for third years, um, begin thinking about residency, residency applications. You're actually a little bit closer to me. How did you sort of start like moving yeah. from board dread to ERAS dread? Yes, yes. Um, both of those things um, unfortunately come like very quickly one right after another. Um, so kind of, I guess before we even get there, I would say in terms of step two CK, um, especially for those of you um, who are now, again, moving into this era where that's going to be your one mm -hmm. actual number score and um, step one's just going to be pass fail, um, which I think is great. Trust me. I think that's great um, for a couple of reasons. One, because I truly wholeheartedly believe like step two CK tests more of like what you truly need to know to be a physician. And um, I think it's a little more of a straightforward exam in terms of like what you can expect to be on there. So that's one reassuring thing. Um, but in terms of when to take that, I usually recommend to people the earlier, the better in terms of like, give yourself a couple of weeks after third year. And again, that's all kind of depends on your medical school and um, what away rotations you have and things like that. Um, but I think the best time, if you can make it work is usually give yourself a couple of weeks after your third year ends and then, and use that time to study more of like a dedicated period and then just go ahead and take it because the closer you are to your clinical rotations, if you did U world for every single rotation throughout the year, you're going to be rock solid and in a good spot, um, to take this exam. Um, so I think, you know, you have to play it on your timeline, but hopefully if you take it earlier on in the summer months um, before you kind of get into the real thick of residency applications. Um, I think that relieves a lot of anxiety. And also um, if you do really well on it, which a lot of people do better on it than they do on um, step one, then you can like go into residency application um, season feeling confident and knowing that that's something that will be on your application that you can be proud of. Um, so in terms of kind of figuring out um, residency application season. First things first is you have to decide on a specialty, which I know sounds very obvious, um, but I think a lot of people, um, myself included, got to the end of third year and we're either de deciding between, uh, you know, a couple specialties or there's a lot of people that get to the end of third year and they're like, wow, I liked everything. I made me only dislike this one thing, but like, how do I decide? Um, and so I think the big things to keep in mind and um, something you can do over your holiday is if you're in that 
position. You know, if you're um, in third year and you're halfway through the year and you already feel like you, you don't really have a clear specialty in mind, just kind of reach out to people, um, you know, mentors, you know, other like other um, students in the class above you that might have been in a similar position. And just kind of ask like, hey, like what things did you think about when deciding on a specialty? Um, and, you know, how did you really narrow it down to this? Um, I myself was oddly between pediatrics and dermatology. I had done a ton of research in dermatology, tons of volunteer work with dermatology. Um, but then I did my peds rotation. I was just like, I just will miss this pathology way too much. And like kids are just so fun. So I want to hang out with them all day. So I really had to weigh kind of the pros and cons of, of that. And I really did that with a lot of my mentors from medical school, as well as um, some um, students in the class above me that had similar debates. So I think kind of reaching out to those people during this time is great. And then the other big thing to think about is if the specialty you're going into requires research and you, you know, say like dermatology is actually a great example. Say you like randomly fell in love with dermatology, like right now, and you need to apply for residency in September. Um, I would definitely look for some research, um, projects over this time. Um, and it's pretty common. So don't stress if that's your situation where you're like, Oh no, I'm going into this specialty that you know, kind of quote unquote requires research. Don't stress, you've got time to figure it out. Um, but I definitely would at least start reaching out to people about it. So specialties like that are like, you know, dermatology, a lot of your like surgical subspecialties that are pretty competitive. Um, you know, those, those are the big ones I usually think about. Dave, do you have any other thoughts on that? No, it's, it's just, that's a super good point. I, this is actually a very nice sort of contrast because you sort of were, were between a couple different ones. Mm -hmm. I was the exact opposite. So I wanted to do ER day one. And I was like, man, this is fun, but I'm bored and this is slow. How can I speed this specialty up uh, a lot quicker in every rotation I did? So, so it, 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 but that's a good, that's a really good point though. Is you make, so uh, P, uh, peds and derm is an odd mix, but like there's there for, you know, there are sort of like, you know, you watch all like the, the videos of like medical funnies and whatnot and the stereotypes, but like there is a lot of people who end up choosing between similar fields. So the classic example is like a lot of the people who become ER docs sit and think about, man, I could do surgery too mm -hmm. because of the sort of, because, you know, the trauma aspect is very similar to ER. Uh, peds in family tends to be very similar mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways. So like it, when you, you know, get, reach out and go to your interest groups, especially in sort of third year, because, you know, a, a good interest group in the very beginning of, of sort of bringing you into the clinical world is going to tell you, you know, like, this is why you should consider this specialty. And like, you know, people who consider this specialty oftentimes consider X, Y, or Z. So like, so like when we did our ER interest group, um, they would be like, yeah, a lot of, lot of people who go into ER who, who think about ER also think about general surgery or trauma surgery because it's very similar. And then they tend to break this way. Like they tend to break towards ER if they highly value like work-life balance and they tend to break towards surgery if they highly value sort of more hands-on material and following patients up. So like, yeah, if, if you're between a couple different things, you know, go to your, your interest meetings, figure out what's, a, you know, what attracted those people to that specialty and, you know, see what fits well for you. And, but, but you're right, you know, it, it comes on fast. It comes on so fast mm -hmm. and you know I, I know people who did multiple who did acting internships and multiple um what's it called specialties mm -hmm. because or applied to multiple specialties um and that's a very good point about research too for derm for optho for neurosurgery um ir is getting that competitive these mm -hmm. days um for your very high competitive specialties you know, make sure you're buffing out your, your research resume. Uh, my neighbor, when I was in uh, med school, um, did derm and is, I guess, a PGY3, I guess, a second year dermatologist then. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I remember reading her CV and I, I recognized zero of the conditions, <laughs> zero. These super specialized granuloma, la, 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 some things uh, and just blew my mind. So like, yeah, if you want to do those super competitive ones, like you said, just think about the research. And if you don't like research, like me, the bane of my existence, do something that doesn't require it. You know, my, my research in ER is, um, I don't know, let's do journal club. So, <laughs> that's it. That's, mo that's largely a lot of the requirements. You do a project or two and then you never think about it again, unless you want to. So that's a, some great points. Oh man. So what if you're like a fourth year and like, so by now you've probably had some interviews you probably have some interviews left. You've got the almighty rank list involved. And soon you want to live the dream. The true dream is after match day. Yeah. One of, my, one of my favorite jokes was written on our wall of our like student room. And it was, uh, what's it called? What disappears when you call its name? And the answer was a post-match M4. <laughs> so always, always made me laugh. So what are some, uh, what are some tips and tricks for our M4 friends who are uh, right now um, interviewing from home? Yes. Which is very different than like yeah. anything that we experience. So also I'll say like my like hearts go out to you guys. I know it's, it's this like weird, like some people like it because it's, I mean, it is nice. I will say, I'm sure you were saving tons of money by not traveling. Um, but also there's something to be said for, you know, it's kind of a bummer if, you know, you're really interested in a place and you want to go check out this city you've never been. And, and instead you're like sitting in your living room where you always are. Um, so I think, you know, big picture in terms of um, how to get through this kind of last home stretch of interviews and then kind of getting ready for, for what's to come, which is making your rank list. I think the best thing you can do um, is A, like truly like take time to relax and like do the things that you enjoy. Like you should, unless you have like interviews like right up until, you know, Christmas and New Year's and, you know, all the other holidays this month, like truly just like enjoy it. Go be with your family. This honestly like it, this is kind of sad, but it might be one of the last like holidays that you get to spend with them for part of residency. Um, you know, if you go to a great residency program like mine, you usually get at least a couple of them off. Um, but, um, you know, so this might be like your last kind of stress-free time to like get to hang out with your family and just enjoy and not have to worry about being back at work the next day. Um, so definitely enjoy that. And then I think in terms of um, kind of thinking about your rank list, um, now is a great time to start thinking about it. Um, I'm sure you've gotten like kind of tips and tricks along the way for interview season about, um, you know, kind of keeping notes on places and this and that, and, you know, trying to keep a running rank list as you go. And I know people have different strategies for that. Um, if you've been doing that, great. Um, keep up with that. If you haven't done that, um, I tried to do that and it was just so hard to keep up with. And I felt like I, I couldn't get a good, like, vibe of things. So I really think at the end of the day, um, kind of taking some time to really reflect on the things that are important to you um, during this time. And I think, again, like being around your family and friends, if you're able to, is, is great for that. Because at the end of the day, I think where you decide to place things on your rank list comes down to a couple big things. One of them is what do you want your life to look like? So where do you want to live? Like truly, like that should be your most important question because you could talk about prestige of programs all day long, but if you're miserable in that city, like it's just not worth it. So, you know, really think about, you know, what is important to me? Is it important to me to be close to family? Is it important to me to like go live my dream of like living in a high rise in New York City for a few years, you know, because I might not ever do that again. Do I want to be near a beach? Do I want to be near the mountains? Like those are things you truly like think about like, during this time. And if that's important to you, like that should reflect in your rank list. Um, and then the other thing, you know, of course, um, you can get into the weeds of like every single program, you know, like salary and days off and types of scheduling and what benefits they offer and this and that. And I will say, and Dave, you can, you can correct me if you feel differently, but I think most residents at the end of the day, like all of our programs, like in terms of benefits and things that they offer are pretty standard at the end of the day. So really like go, go with your gut based on like 
what vibe you got about the program. And I know it's probably a little bit different to experience that um, on Zoom, um, but I will say most residency programs these days have like Instagram accounts and this and that, like literally go get on Instagram and look, does it look like their residents are like fun and are happy? And you know, um, truly like anybody you interviewed with um, or anybody you talked to during the social gatherings, they would be more than happy to like chat one-on-one -on -one with you and be, most of us are very, very candid about the pros and cons of our own program and will be forthcoming with that. And so I think um, this is a great time to reach back out to programs you were interested in, but like might need a little more info or might need a little bit of, um, you know, kind of, you know, insider scoop about like truly like how happy they are there and what the good and bad things about every program are, because inevitably there is, you know, there is good and bad everywhere. Um, but overall, um, you know, you want to end up somewhere you're happy and your rank list should reflect that. So I would say try not to get bogged down in the weeds of like, and there's all those like spreadsheets on Google that you can mm -hmm. find and this and that. And you have to take all of those with a grain of salt. Um, but at the end of the day, you should you should go like where you're going to be the most happy and like don't stress about all those other things. That's my biggest piece of advice. I that was that was really well said. And there's just and, and there's so many ways to sort of like rank and there's so many ways to delineate. And I find, and again, I find it interesting. I feel like we we did things probably pretty differently, and mm -hmm. ended up both very happy. So it's it's a reminder that there's no one way to do it. Um, I agree entirely. Location, location, location. I remember, I was uh, I wrote my own little spreadsheet, and I I, um, I I I would put every program, and then on the X column, and then on the Y column was all the things I cared about location er does both three and four year programs number of years you know what sort of pathology did it see you know how safe was the area uh what was the salary like what was the benefits like um and i sort of probably dug into details a little bit more than than probably you did um and that's okay because again different you know we we're looking probably for different things to a certain degree um and 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 i and i usually tell my students to dig a little bit further into those details because there's probably little 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 details that if and i'll give you a good example i interviewed at a um uh, very nice hospital in the middle of detroit um and nice residents nice people nothing against them um but like their salary was probably about 25 percent lower than the average and because of a weird state law in michigan your benefits counted towards your salary so it was really 40 percent less than your average so like always keep an eye on those little little details too you know like ask the residents candidly how is it to live here um do you find that you you struggle do you find that you get a good value for where you where you live like where i ended up sort of matched my values i live i live in rural pennsylvania where sort of what I what I take in is pretty good for, for comparison, and it goes very far. Um, the taxes here are, are, are very low. Um, you can you can get a, a good rental house or apartment for cheap. Um, if you have kids, the school districts here are very good. And so a lot of those a lot of those details again. But I guess let me sort of summarize: is your details should sort of reflect your values. Mm -hmm. And what's important to you because everyone's are slightly different um and, and it's also it, it's like you sort of mentioned it's it's specialty specific too mm -hmm. um if you're doing um like i'll give you an example um one of my friends in, in med school wanted not just to be an orthopedic surgeon she wanted to be the orthopedic surgeon um so she did a um she took a year off and did like a quote unquote, uh, middle of the, like a middle med school internship with the football team in Washington, DC um, to be the orthopedic surgeon. Uh, because some specialties inherently have sort of a sort of a higher hierarchy like that. ER is the exact opposite to a certain degree. One ER kind of looks like the next ER. And uh, I mean, you're going to intubate people and they're going to come to you. So for a large part, you know, it's almost the exact opposite. So what is your specialty? Do you guys have and guys ha and gals have sort of like a big uh, research hierarchy or is it a lot more relaxed in terms of like, um, you know, do you get good training everywhere? Because my like my residency is in sort of like the middle of nowhere. 
but it's one of the busiest ERs in the nation. So like no one would have guessed that, but like that's sort of what my specialty prizes is the ability to see volume and pathology. And as such, we're treated very well because it's a more rural location than a more city life. Um, and then, yeah, at talk to the residents, talk to the residents. My big thing, my big question was scheduling. But that's also a very ER specific thing. ER is um, what's it called? Shift work. So a good scheduling system and a bad scheduling system really can affect your quality of life. And like where I am now, they have a really good scheduling system that they use the same scheduling system the attendings use. Um, and it allows you to pick your days off and you get like up to four almost guaranteed days off uh, that you can choose. And their sign out procedure gets you out on time 85 plus percent of the time, which is a big deal. Uh, so, and again, you know, you find out, and again, that's why I'm plugging sort of a repeat plug for your interest groups um, at your schools or like advisors or, you know, sort of mentors of upperclassmen or, you know, when you're working, if you're working with us, a lot of us have been through a lot of this. Um, what is important for your quality of life for that specialty that you may not see in the brochure and does your program do it well or is there play, there's opportunity for improvement? So I know some, pro, some programs in ER, they do it two, 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 two mornings, two afternoon, two nights, two off. The problem with the 222 is that that first day off is not a day off because you're you're going back to days. So it's really a 2221. Um, and I found a lot, you know, a lot of places that I that uh, I went to that had that, that was sort of one of their unhappy, you know, moments. And I mean, you, you have to be a certain point, you have to be reasonable about what you can get, but like keep in mind what is important for you. And then I wrote rules sort of like for my rank list. Like, yeah, I'd like to be in the Northeast over or other places. I'd like to be in a three-year program over a four-year program. I'd like to be in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania over the rest of the Northeast. Uh, I'd like to be in a rural area over uh, a big city. So like, and, and I use those rules. They weren't rigid, but they helped me sort of put everywhere into tiers. And then based off my, my individual experience with that program, I would move the tiers all around. So there's so many ways to do it. Um, and again, you, you, you guys have a great opportunity because you get to hear two of us say, say our, our ways um, and both led to, you know, happy, happy. And look at us, I look like I've slept. She looks like she slept. So don't tell our program directors that. Yeah, don't yeah, uh, don't tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And then plan the remainder of your med school. Where are you going on vacation? So obviously last year that wasn't not so much of a thing. But um, you know, get your shots, go on vacation. My goodness. Yeah. Where did I go? I went to Puerto Rico. So and laid on the beach for a long time and did a whole lot of nothing. So yep. you know, figure out what you're gonna look forward to. And then we are residents. What do we do? Well, um, you should rest. That's like literally, oh, Ooh. that is what I'm putting on my to-do list, even yeah. though I don't have a whole lot of time off for the holidays, but we should rest. Um, the other things that a lot of these are looming over me on, on other than step three, um, you know, for residents out there, if you haven't taken step three, I would 150% recommend like do it as soon as you can and like use this time you can crank out your studying if you really really try hard you can get through your you world pretty darn quick um so i would recommend doing it sooner rather than later um just because the further you get from you know if you're a um pediatrician or you know an er doc the further you get from OBGYN or psychiatry um the more you're going to forget and those things come back to haunt you on this exam so um I just recommend, you know, take it sooner rather than later. Um, so use this time to study if you have a little bit of time off and you haven't taken it yet. Um, otherwise, if you're like me, you're starting to think about fellowship applications, starting to think about, um, you know, research, you know, working on research that will then go on your fellowship application. Um, but really, if I, if I had to pick one thing to say, rest. I think um, yeah. all residents deserve more rest. So if you can, make some time for that for sure. Mm -hmm. 
uh, uh, and concur a hundred percent, get some rest, get some sleep. Um, I'm actually somewhat lucky. I'm on ultrasound this month. Oh, so nice. It's a, it's a chiller rotation. I just go in an ultrasound, random things. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so keep an eye. I, I agree with step three. You know, it, it's a good point to bring up too. Your specialties can, should determine how quickly you have to or should take step three. Mm -hmm. Step three is by nature, like a 50% family medicine, internal medicine exam, 30% ER medicine, 20% specialties exam so like if you're not internal family um you should probably take it sooner rather than later um and largely the number doesn't make doesn't matter for most people which is nice so like just yeah get through it find your your you know i had anesthesia in like my third rotation so like i just uh i would go intubate people from 9 to uh 3 p.m and then, uh, then go oh, do questions in between cases. Yeah. So I'd, I'd wait for, you know, I'd, I'd uh, you know, try and knock out five questions between every case. Um, and then I would get it over with and then it's done. And then you get your license and you're happy forever and ever. Um, again, if you're doing research projects, now is the time to, you know, get caught up. I have a couple QI projects that I that I'm involved in, it's hard to see, but I have my whiteboard here that has everything I'm involved in and the status and what's next of it. So, and I try to update that every couple of days. Um, and then if you're doing fellowship, uh, again, bless your soul. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm foot and a half out the door of residence here already. <laughs> no fellowship for me, but uh, if, that is, if that is your gig, you know, now's the time to do it. Matches are now. Literally today was the pediatric yeah. uh, match. Yeah. So you're right. Um, I was on medical ICU last month, and one of our residents matched in the middle of it. So like, it's crazy, it's crazy, super exciting. So, and then yeah, get some sleep, see your family, see your friends, uh, see your girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, whatever. Um, do all the important things of life. Pet your cats. Yeah, so, the big things that matter. Oh, this is a good one. So best practices to avoid burnout. And I think we're almost up to our question and answer. So if you have questions, we have answers. Um, yeah. Balance the desire to get ahead with the desire to rest or the need to rest. Um, and I mean, everyone's a little bit different too. We're all sort of sins and our, you know, our different social needs and our sleep needs and you know, all of our, you know, needs to, to, to go exercise or be with friends and whatnot. So, um, so obviously make sure to take time for your friends, make time for your family. Obviously it's still a pandemic out there. So do be safe. Um, but you know, it's, you know, always a good time to, 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 you know, get together as a family. Um, I recently entered the point in my adult life where I got a free turkey from a grocery store. Uh, I know, and they gave me a nice. free ham too. So like now I have to figure out how to cook this turkey and ham. Um, so like, that's going to be my project for the next week. Um, <laughs> um, and then, you know, catch up on your hobbies too. What are my hobbies? Um, I like to pet my cats. I'm catching up on that. Um, I like to go to the gym. Catching up on that. Um, I like to make food. I'm catching up on that. Um, and then just you know the things you like to do. I like to read the news. I like to uh, hang out with my girlfriend. And what's it called? Do all the things that make me happy. So. Um, one of my, my, our school's uh, chief academic advisor uh, used to say, you know, if you're studying for exam, don't stop doing the things you're doing because you like to do because you're studying. And that's, I was sort of paraphrasing that for everything. Don't stop doing the things you like to do just because you're a medical school or you're a resident. You may have to sort of move things around, but like, you know, I, all my friends are involved in things that they enjoy. Now, ER is, is, is classically known as a, as, a, as a chill one. So like our chief resident last year has her own horse breeding and training company, right? Uh, one of my co-residents is involved in biotech and he's making COVID tests. 
but all right so like have your have your niche and you know and, you know advance it and you know enjoy it uh, what are you gonna do um you know i i have lots of hobbies um a lot of them involve um also petting my cats um good, but i'm good, a i'm good. a huge i'm a huge family person um and i think that's the, i if i have like one piece of advice about you know anytime you have off not just holiday break but like anytime you have off if you are someone who thrives by being around family, friends, you know, people back home, mm-hmm. make time to do those things. Um, and, you know, um, don't feel like you have to be studying all the time or always, you know, um, you know, staying in town to do X, Y, Z for medical school or residency. Um, I try to get home every chance I get. I'm in Cincinnati and my family's in mm-hmm. St. Louis. So they're about, um, you know, five, five and a half hours. It's a pretty easy drive. Um, so yeah, I'm actually, you know, I only get, I only get two days off for the, the holidays this year, but I'm going to be going home. I'm like post call one day, going to drive home, um, on Christmas day and go spend it with my family. And I think, um, those are the things that recharge me. So like, whatever it is that makes you like, feels like it rejuvenates you and like reminds you why you went into medicine, because let's be real, it can be really stressful and really, mm-hmm. um, easy to get burnt out, but the things and the people and, you know, the activities that you do that make you feel feel like you um, and remind you of who you are outside of medicine because you are still a person. If you are not a doctor, you have other things about you that still make you you. And so um, you should definitely make time for those things, whatever that is, um, and don't feel guilty about it. Um, and and the other plug I will say for residency um, or, you know, for med students going into residency, I will say in med school, I felt like I was so tight on money always that I always, you know, I was like, Oh, I can't, I can't even spare the gas money to go do this. Like you will, you will start making money in residency and life will be much better. Um, and like, you will have more than enough to like drive home and see your parents or like buy a flight to go visit your best friend. So do those things. If that's important to you, do those things. That's my really, my really big piece of advice. And that's what I will be doing during this break. No, that's beautiful. And again, sort of, sort of the copy forward, you know, your, you know, the questions you ask represent the values. Your budget usually represents your, should represent your values mm-hmm. too. So if you're making a resident salary, it, you know, you, you should have enough to be able to do the things you want to do um, while still keeping the lights on and keeping the food on the plate. Yes. <laughs> um, so, um, and I mean, it's a good time too, if you find, and I know a lot of, a lot of residents, a lot of interns, they get, uh, they get budget busted in intern year. It's like now's a good time to like catch up and review where you are, Mm -hmm. you know, review, you know, how, because uh, what are those things? Loans, those are coming back. Yeah, they're coming back. They just announced yesterday, they're coming back next month. So it's (laughs) the worst renewal I've ever seen. I know. So so yeah, I mean, like it's it's a good chance to, in a low stress environment, go through and sort of recatalog what's going on in life. You know, how's your budget? How's your family? How's your friends and stuff like that? So uh, I'm a big fan of, again, taking this time. And then again, you know, like, you, like you said, you don't feel pressure to do this big stressful study plan. You know, I do my Anki every day. Um, and it's, today I have 36 cards. That's it. That's it as a senior resident. And it's it's a far cry from the heydays of scrolling through hundreds of cards a day for step one. Mm-hmm. But like, it still brings me, man, joy is, joy is a weird, weird world. It feels like Stockholm syndrome at that point. Um, but like, it brings me efficient ability to um, remember and apply material. So I do it for 10, 15 minutes a day. I add a couple cards based on what I saw in the ER that day or what I'm particularly working on. I have a little inbox and things that I want to turn into cards. So like, you know, especially studying as a resident, you know, you don't have to do a ton. Mm-hmm. You're, you can do that slow burn um, so that you do avoid burnout, but you are efficient and you're sort of moving forward with what you want to learn at the same time. So um hey it's almost question and answer time so i hope y'all saved your your cues um so a little bit about about us uh med school tutors again um what's it called we've been here a long time 
if again, if it has anything to do with medical education, I'm sure we do it from content review to test taking to making schedules to uh, sort of mentorship. Um, you know, everything in, in between. We've been doing it a long time. So if you have any questions, we do have a, uh, what's it called? Free phone um, sort of consultation to see if it does fit for you. Because, you know, we have a big, we have a big box of tools and maybe one of them sort of fits your needs perfectly. Um, so, um, you know, if you have any questions, by all means, reach out to us. And that, with that, we can begin the question and answer session. So we're going to give everyone a moment or so. What questions do you have about, you know, if you're writing a study plan for yourself over the break, or if you're writing a chill plan for yourself over the break? Um, you know, any questions about, uh, you know, what resources may be good. And, and again, I'm a, I'm a big fan. If you're like an M1, M2, M3, pick like one or two things that um, you stink at and fill that hole in because you'll give it your full undivided attention with a couple of resources. Um, and again, I, I, you know, I'll give you an example. Again, I have, I have my little system at this point. Um, what I'm spending a lot of this month on when I'm on ultrasound is, you know, nerve blocks, like dental blocks and understanding the different, you know, lidocaine, novocaine, prilocaine, tetracaine, you know, and, and speaking of pediatrics, let Emla oh, gel. Let. Oh yeah. All the time. yeah. Love yeah, that yeah. Stuff. Like, two weeks ago, I was like, what is can I just pick one? It turns out you can't just pick one. Classic <laughs> ER attitude. Um, and now I know Elamax goes on non-violated uh, skin. It can there only you go. go. Skin. Look, at, look at me now. I love it. Uh, so, um, and then just, you know, as we wait for questions, we can go through sort of like, what are the most common mistakes that you sort of see students make during holiday seasons? Yeah, I think a lot of the 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 big mistakes that that people make is either one of I think it's one of two things and it's kind of just going on on the extremes of either like doing absolutely nothing during your break to even just like you know and again, you can take some time off, but I think it is a really good time, you know, whatever stage in training you are to really just like think about the next steps, think about what's coming and you know send a couple emails, you know, if you need to find a research project or, you know, start building your step one schedule, if you're about to start dedicated in the next couple months. Um, and so, you know, either way, um, you know, so if you don't do any of those things, you might feel behind when you come back and you kind of jump back into the swing of things after holiday break. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the other thing that, you know, you could, you can also do, and I think is a, is a little bit of, mis of a mistake is not allow yourself this time to relax a little bit. Um, like I said, like all of medical training, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and you have to, you know, give yourself time and give yourself like the grace to take some time, um, because you deserve it. You've worked hard. You've taken tons of exams already and we'll take tons more. Um, you know, you've already done applications for medical school and now you're going to be doing residency or fellowship or things like that. And so, um, you know, you have time to do all of those things, but just make sure you're, you know, um, giving yourself a little bit of a break too, because there's nothing worse than, you know, having to go back to work or training or whatever, um, in the next coming weeks and feeling like you didn't get any time to even like watch your favorite Netflix show or, you know, drink your eggnog by the fire, you know? No, nah, it's, it's a great point. I really like the example of like the extremes too. Mm -hmm. like you do too much, you do too little. That's sort of, and again, use these time to sort of find what is the right spot for you. Um, and it's nice because it should be a low stress time. If you find yeah. yourself stressed out, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, and sort of the other most common mistakes um, that I will tend to see um, is, uh, is again, just trying to do, the other thing I'll see too often is trying to do too much, but trying to do too many things. Let me try to explain the sort of difference. Um, you'll try, I'll see students that are trying to get three, four, five things done, and they, they get through each of them a very small amount versus sort of like what I said, the best, my, like my best practice, if you want to get something done over a break is to pick one or two topics 
period, mm -hmm. and then alternate between those two topics. Students will get themselves in trouble if they want to, you know, you want to review uh, biochem and genetics and um, what's it called, cardiology all in a week. And like, that's, that's real tough. Even if you're putting a reasonable amount of time in to like, you're not overdoing it, you're still spreading yourself a little bit. I guess spreading yourself thin is probably the, the other thing too. So like yeah. pick one or two things. I recommend two because task switching is, is great for, for neurocognitive learning. Um, so like pick two things you want to get good at and then just do those back to back to back. And every day when you do it, you'll pick up a little bit more than you did the previous day. And you'll find as you move th you know, through the days and through a week or two that you've improved greatly through it. So like, again, I've sort of been alternating back and forth between like these blocks and these, these pediatric things and like orthopedic fractures that are like, remember the Montesia and the Galeazzi stuff? Yeah, now I have to know how to do that. So I have to manage that now. Uh, so like I go back and forth between my like ortho and like my anesthesia stuff. And like, you know, every, every couple of days or so I go back and forth and I get a little bit deeper understanding of each of them by giving it time. So um, I hope this was helpful for y'all. If you have any other questions, please drop them below. If you have any feedback for us, whether it's a uh, great job, you guys stink, somewhere in the middle, uh, feel, please feel free to drop sort of your thoughts into the chat as well. If there's something you think that we sort of missed or should have touched on more, or if, you know, do you have a, a thought of what might make a really good webinar that you either wish existed or wanted us to put together. Um, and I'll give everyone sort of like 15 or 20 seconds as I scoop up this kitten. <laughs> ah, she's, been sitting, she's been sitting patiently next to the monitor the entire time, slowly out of screen. This is Kit Marie, a little Mitter Miracle cat who survived uh, lymphosarcoma when she was one. Oh my god. 18 months of chemo and now she is three. Oh, <laughs> she hates it. So, so if we have no other uh, thoughts, questions, concerns, complaints, uh, Callie, it has been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure as well. Yeah, thank you to the voices and hands of, of God above us. That is Jonathan and Faith um, for helping us put these together. Um, what's it called? Um, again, we're hanging out. Oh. Oh, look at the kitty. Bring, I had to bring mine. This is Queso. Oh, look at that. That is that, one of look two. At the, look, at the, look at the stiff arm. That was Heisman-esque, <laughs> that stiff arm. So <laughs> um, again, if you need anything, we are med school tutors. We're hanging out with Cram Fighter. Again, Cram Fighter, declutter your thoughts, declutter your mind. Uh, and uh, good luck and have a good Christmas, holiday, whatever you may celebrate. Um, whatever, you know, tis the season. Uh, Festivus for the rest of us. Yes. <laughs> uh, bye, everyone. Bye.